When people ask us about the paths we took to ending up together hosting a daily television show, we tell them the truth. We're not exactly sure how we made it here, but we sure are happy to be here. Today's Across the Table guest's path to hosting several different top radio shows is one she also didn't exactly set out on. I recently caught up with Kristen Hayward at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. And while you may still recognize her voice, these days she has put down the microphone to focus on her true passion of helping those who have suffered from domestic violence and sexual assault. Kristen, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Thank you for sitting down with me. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you want to know? That's one of your... Best margaritas you've ever had? Oh, no, legitimately. I mean, it's the perfect mix of sour, salty, and just a little sweet. It's perfect. Okay, what do I want to know? Let's start with, for viewers watching that may feel like, wait, I know that voice from somewhere. <laughs> they might. You might recognize my face from the radio. Yeah, I might you recognize might. your face from the radio. So you, tell me about your, let's start with the radio part of, of the journey that is Kristen. Um, I was at SDSU and was majoring in journalism and was thinking about going into TV journalism, much like yourself. And I was like, I don't know that I want to tell other people's stories. I want to just talk about myself. Okay. <laughs> so KSDJ is the radio station at SDSU. And I basically stumbled into the, you know, revolving door and um, was on the radio there for just a few weeks. And this never happens. So I feel very hashtag blessed. But I got a phone call from Hot 104 and they said, do you want to work for us? We like your voice. So then I was on Hot 104 for three years and loved it part time. And they gave me enough responsibility to be on the overnights and the weekends and power down the stations and power them back up, which is incredible. And then and then, uh, yeah, and then I switched over to the Crow Morning Show in 2005, which is feels like two decades ago, which it is. <laughs> What's the craziest stuff behind the scenes that happens at the radio? Oh, that we don't we don't get to I see. I don't here. know how much of that I can oh. actually share. But um, my favorite memory on the Crow Morning Show was we had an intern named Jory, and he is still one of my favorite people in the world. And Allison Chains was coming to Sioux Falls, and they were playing out at the um, at the fairgrounds, and we were trying to do a play on one of the songs of the contest, how to get those people to get to that to the concert. And one of the songs is called Man in the Box, and Jory went in a refrigerator box outside of some business somewhere, I don't even remember where we ended up putting him, somewhere in Sioux Falls, and we basically just played hot and cold on the phone. <laughs> I mean, as dangerous as you can possibly get, we absolutely should have probably gone to jail for doing this on the air, but people call in, they go, okay, on the south side of Minnesota Avenue, and we'd go, cold, and then we'd narrow it down. But listening to Jory's voice with his microphone absolutely stinking live in that refrigerator box going, I hear them running toward me, I hear them running toward me. <laughs> Or he was just terrified. But, you know, those those old days of like being able to get tickets in a really like fun way, Mm -hmm. you know, not just standing in line or being online to do it. It was just really fun. Sometimes you wonder who gave us this show. I really don't know. Right. Because it it was our idea. I mean, this didn't come from some corporate thing. It was literally just me and Cade sitting down going, how do we give these way? How did you get from radio to nonprofit work? Um, I think really, uh, you know, I consider myself to be a Democrat. And so I, in 2016, when, when someone was elected, I just made a decision with my husband that we just kind of wanted to give back. How do we give back to the community and not just, uh, stay in a space of, you know, um, I don't know, ignorance or, you know, so he decided to run for office. I decided to work for a candidate um, and, and put my neck out there. And then we've just stayed in nonprofits, both of us, um, since then. So it's been really amazing. Um, and I, I'm really grateful now to be at the Compass Center and working for Michelle Trent. And I, I'm just just really blessed. What makes you passionate about the Compass Center? Um, certainly my own experience, my own life, my own history. In the state of South Dakota, um, you know, in, in, in high school and peer and things like that, there was just not a lot of great things that came out of that space for me. And so I just, how else can I give back other than using my shared experience? Um, I, you know, I'm very passionate about people who've been assaulted, people who've been had domestic violence in their life, and how can I help them get out of that space? So if, if I can do this kind of heart work the rest of my life, that's all I need. It's not easy work. No. It's not easy work at all. No, it's, it is very hard. There's a lot of days where comments get made about women or the way that we, you know, if we lie about assaults that happen to us or if we are, you know, are um, not coming from a place of truth, then we are vilified. We are the victim. We are the wrong person in the space instead of saying like, no, we, 
we know what happened to us. We're not lying. And we need the community of Sioux Falls and the Sioux Falls area to stand with us to say, oh, no, we hear you. This happens every day. And how can we um, and get people out of these situations? So. How important is it to you to be a voice for people who maybe aren't comfortable with that voice right now for themselves? It's weird for me because I feel like I've been so loud about it for so long that like it doesn't feel foreign to me. Like I've been saying since 2016 that I was assaulted in high school and so I've mentioned it and gone through it and I'm in trauma therapy and I've done all this kind of work. Um, it doesn't feel foreign to me to talk about it. So, so when other people come to me and they're like, thank you for sharing or thank you for saying something, I just like, oh, you're welcome, I guess. It's just a very, it's an interesting interaction to have, but what is so nice about being in the space at the Compass Center is having people sit down and go, me too, me too. When we look back at some of the hardest parts of our life that we don't necessarily wish to relive them or have them to happen, if we could have stopped them from happening, we probably would have, but mm -hmm. there's something of value to an experience you had that you now relate to somebody mm -hmm. else in a way you never would have before yeah. and in a way that you can do really quality work and, and, and that's something that I sense from you, you yeah. have gratitude for. Absolutely, 100%. I don't think we go through the stuff that we all go through in our lives for a reason. We're not, you know, it, it, it could be bad reasons, it could be good reasons, but there's reasons for us to get to the space that we need to be healed and we need to be better. And so if that means I'm a catalyst in certain spaces for people to, to heal or to get better, then that's amazing. And I don't, I would never want anyone to not feel valid when something like that has happened to them because it doesn't make you less human, it makes you more so. A lot of the story I hear from you over your life wasn't super intentional, right? Like you, you kind of fell into a space you loved in the radio. You made a decision to go serve in nonprofits. Do you have any idea what's next? <laughs> um, I do want to write a book. I have been very um, intentional about that for a few years now. I have journals in every corner of the house. So I'm hoping whoever wants to put the book together is thoughtful as to how to put it together and kind to me that it's not all in one place. But um, yeah, I really would like to write a book. I'd love to do public speaking. It's, I know it's a big fear for some people, but I love it. And so, um, yeah, or maybe, you know, my own, you know, small radio show. So, I mean, not a podcast. I don't know. Yeah. You never know. Cheers to landing here with me today for this interview. Cheers Thank to you yours. so much. Of course. JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars is Sioux Falls' premier adult beverage retailer with the widest selection of premium wine, spirits, and beer in the region. They're located at 3000 West 57th Street in Sioux Falls. It may feel like spring is still weeks away, but graduation season is just around the corner. Book your graduation event with JJ's today. Visit JJ'sWine.com for more information or email events at JJ'sWine.com to find out what they have to offer for event space, catering, and beverage service. This Kelloland Living segment has been sponsored by JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. Locally owned since 1998, a true mom and pop shop.